Christ yesterday, today, and today, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and Omega. All time belongs to Him and all ages. To Him be glory and power through every age Christ our Lord guard and keep us. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. It's generally tradition for me to uh, say that that wasn't loud enough and I did not hear you. Uh, so uh, let's, let's do that one more time with enthusiasm. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Glory to God in the highest and, and peace to his people, people on earth. earth. Lord God, God heavenly King. King. Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life. Grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection may by your life-giving spirit be delivered from sin and raised from death through jesus christ our lord who lives and reigns with you in the holy spirit one god now and forever amen, amen. you may be attentive to the reading of god's word This morning's first reading is from the Acts of the Apostles. So Peter opened his mouth and said, Truly, I understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. As for the word that he sent to Israel, preaching good news of peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. You yourselves know what happened throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee after the baptism that John proclaimed, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and made him appear, not to all the people, but to us who had been chosen by God as witnesses, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray this morning's psalm in unison. It's Psalm 118, verses 14 through 17. And 22 to 24. We will pray in unison. 
The Lord is my strength and my song, and has become my salvation. The voice of joy and deliverance in the dwellings of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord brings mighty things to pass. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord brings mighty things to pass. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. The same stone which the builders refused has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And this morning's second reading is from Paul's letter to the Colossians. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. After the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat upon it. His appearance was like lightning, and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. Lo, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Hail. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brethren to go to Galilee. And there they will see me. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I could say you'd be seated, but... Most of you probably are. Uh, hallelujah. It was uh, really nice to come into church today and to see uh, not the dark, muted bareness of the um, of Lent that we have up, the darker banners and, and the lack of the icons and everything veiled and, and dark. And uh, it, was, it was nice to come in and see it all bright and light and flowers. About the only thing that's uh, really missing is seeing you. Uh, here with us, um, surrounding us, and enjoying uh, this work and labor of those who have dressed the altar and dressed the sanctuary in, in a way that is appropriate for the season, in a way that reflects our hearts and the joy that is, that is ours because of the resurrection. Uh, I like to, a lot of times this season and throughout this season, I am overly, I'm overly reminded or constantly reminded of the portions in both of the creeds where we say, I believe in the resurrection of the body, or I believe, or we believe, or we look for the resurrection of the dead. 
And I, I think what we have those constant reminders, and it's part of our creed, that this is who we are. We are a resurrection people, and we are a people that not only believe in the resurrection, but live out of that re resurrection, that eternal life that he has promised us. But most of us, I think, and maybe because it's there at the end of the creed and not the very beginning, or, or maybe because it's something that we'd like to hold off as long as possible, are more like Martha when Jesus, uh, uh, Martha and when Jesus met her there in John 11, there's the story about Lazarus being sick and then dying. And Jesus coming up and Martha's there to him and Jesus is trying to reassure her and, and tell her that, you know, that she will see him again. And she goes, yes, I, I believe that someday or in that day or there will be a day where there will be a resurrection. And I, and I think most of us sometimes wrestle with the resurrection in that area. Someday, beyond my lifetime, beyond my control, when there's nothing else I can do about it, there will be a resurrection. And we try to comfort ourselves with that hope. I think the Easter season and the gospel message, though, reminds us that Jesus and the resurrection, or Jesus as the resurrection, shows up in unexpected places. The entire Easter season, we will be telling stories and recounting the events after the resurrection where Jesus makes his resurrection appearances. He shows up in locked rooms. He shows up along the seashore. He shows up on a mountain. He shows up um, on the road, on the road to Emmaus. He shows up in the breaking of bread. One of the things that the Easter season tells us in the gospel message is that we as Christians, as a people who believe in the resurrection, as those who have been touched by and moved by the resurrection, can expect Jesus to show up in previously unexpected places. I thought I'd like to do that or maybe remind you today, uh, maybe in this time, kind of remind you where you can expect to meet Jesus. And so here in uh, Matthew 28, where the gospel reading was from, I want to look at maybe four points here where, where we can expect God to show up, where we can expect to encounter Jesus and his new life and the resurrection power that he brings with him that we live out of in this new life of ours. It says that Mary Magdalene there in the first verse, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the other Mary, went to the tomb. And I think one of the first things that we need to remind ourselves or we need to expect to see Jesus meet us and greet us when we are in a moment of loss and we are in a moment of grief and we are in a moment of hopelessness. Now, if I told you that I was going to go see Jesus' tomb, you would probably congratulate me and say, oh, well, you're going to the Holy Land. You're going over there to see the Holy Sepulchre. You're going there to see an empty tomb. But when the Marys and the women were going to the tomb that morning, they were going there to grieve their friend. They were going there to grieve someone they loved. They were going there with a sense of loss and disappointment, a sense of maybe abandonment and maybe a sense of fear, knowing that maybe they could be next, that the wrath of the rulers would turn on them and they should also have to flee and run. In those moments, when we think we've lost everything, in those moments of grief, we can expect the new life of Christ, this resurrection power, him, we can expect to counter Jesus. We're no longer there alone. They come up there and they go and they meet him. And they think, well, they don't actually meet Jesus first. They meet an angel. This angel comes up and he tells them and gives them something to do. And he, he sends them out. Um, and they, they're leaving with this good news that he is no longer in the tomb. They leave with this good sense of wonderment. And it says that they leave with fear and great joy. I want to remind you today that Jesus will meet you in those places of fear and great joy. Now we look at those two emotions. We go, I, I don't know if I've ever felt fear and joy at the same time. But most of us have if you stop to think about it. 
There was great joy in my heart the day I stood at the altar and I said, I do, and married Nancy. But there was also fear, not of Nancy, but of those things that our life was going to now be different. There was big change coming up and I was hoping or afraid that maybe I wouldn't be enough or maybe I would fail in this endeavor. There was joy and fear. When we watch the birth of children or when they come into the world, there's that moment there is just this joy of a new birth and the, the cry and just the warmth and the cuddling. And the, but there's also great fear. Are we going to be able to protect this new one? Are we going to be able to love and cherish them? Well, what happens down the road? What, what kind of pitfalls will happen in life, are we going to be enough? Fear and great joy, these little sacramental moments almost in our lives where we turn, we can expect to meet and to encounter Jesus because he lives, and because we don't do these moments alone anymore. I think one of the, the third ways is after the angel had told them to go tell his disciples, go tell the brothers of Jesus that he had risen and wants to meet them on the mountain. The ladies then went and there suddenly was Jesus. And I like that line, there's suddenly Jesus. Because that's good news for most of us. Because in the midst of their obeying, in the midst of their obedience, they encountered Jesus. It's good for us to remind ourselves that just that day in and day out of obedience to his word, the discipline of the daily office, the loving our neighbors, the forgiving those as, they, as, we, as we have been forgiven, the helping the poor, uh, the, the homeless, the, the weak, helping those who need our help and protecting the widow and the orphan, those things that we were asked to do, those things that we were commanded to do when we obey, as routine as it seems, as common and ordinary as it seems, as it just, as we obey, we meet Jesus. He comes into our lives, he breaks into that way and gives us a reason. It's not that we've earned his presence, he just suddenly is there. That's good for us. Good for us to know and good for us to remember so that the days don't get too long and us just doing the right thing. He's there with us. And I know that because if we go a little bit beyond the, the gospel reading this morning and come up to the end where the 11 disciples or where the disciples did meet him on the mountain and Jesus does show up, his disciples are there with him and they look and it says that they both worshiped and doubted. I think that we should be reminded or should learn to expect to see Jesus when we meet with his people, when we meet with the people that he calls my brothers and sisters, when we gather together as his body and not only worship him, but also have the freedom to doubt. Not maybe doubt the resurrection, but if you notice that Jesus had called them my brothers, these ones who turned away from him, these ones who abandoned him, these ones who betrayed him and denied him. He referred to them as brothers, as somebody that was forgiven. He wasn't coming back to hold a grudge. He wasn't coming back to get even. He wasn't coming back to say, I told you so. He told Mary, Mary, look, go get my brothers. I need to see him. And so when the disciples did get to see him, and so they not only worshipped him, and maybe they doubted, maybe this was just too much to believe, maybe it was going to take some time to wrap their head around all that he is actually doing. But maybe they just doubted whether they were worthy. Maybe they just saw that how they had failed this last week and how they had messed up and maybe weren't real... Um, Proud, more ashamed of what they were doing. Maybe they just doubted they were brothers. And I think sometimes at the end of the week, we're like that. But 
we need to know and need to remember that Jesus shows up in the midst of our doubts, in the midst of our worship, and promises that he will never leave us nor forsake us. And that's really the resurrection message, that we're not alone. And that not even death can separate us from the love of God. That this new life and him showing up in unexpected places means that this entire world is in the process of being redeemed. Through his love and through his life. It changes the entire story of the world. It changes the art of creation. It's redeemed love and he's showing up in unexpected places so i would encourage you this easter season to take time in your own life and take time in the lives of others and as you engage and reach out and touch and try to try to stay connected that you look for jesus in those unexpected places because he's there he's waiting amen in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit amen Generally, at this time of year, at this, uh, we renew our baptismal vows, so rather than the Nicene Creed, we will proclaim our faith in the words of the ancient baptismal confession, the Apostles' Creed. Amen? Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I do. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in Jesus Christ? I do. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I do. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us kneel for prayer. Let us pray for the church and for the world, saying, hear our prayer. For the peace of the whole world and for the well-being and unity of the people of God. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For Foley, our Archbishop, and William and Richard, our bishops and for all the clergy and people of our diocese and congregation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all those who proclaim the gospel at home and abroad, and for all who teach and disciple others. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters in Christ who are persecuted for their faith. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For our nation, for those in authority, and for all in public service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those who are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, especially for those diagnosed with or showing symptoms of COVID-19, Andreas S., Derek, Kara S., David, Emma, Jimmy H., 
Arlene W. Ruth. Andy. Lisa L. Chris L. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. For all those who have departed this life in the certain hope of the resurrection, especially for Dave Williams, May Tillman, Johnny Ramirez. In thanksgiving, let us pray. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, grant these our prayers for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who sincerely repent and with true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Share a sign of Christ's peace with someone there with you. Peace be with you. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them up, up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
but chiefly we are bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was offered for us and has taken away the sins of the world. Who by his death destroyed death, and by his rising to life again won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had sinned against you and became subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent your only Son, Jesus Christ, into the world for our salvation. By the Holy Spirit and Virgin Mary, he became flesh and dwelt among us. In obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself once for all that by his suffering and death we might be saved. By his resurrection, he broke the bonds of death, trampling hell and Satan under his feet. As our great high priest, he ascended to your right hand in glory that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in the remembrance. Jesus took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood in the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whatever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O oh Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Sanctify us also, that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament and be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. In the fullness of time, Put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us with you all your saints into the joy of your heavenly kingdom, where we shall see our Lord face to face. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. We do not presume to come to this short table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your abundant and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose character is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed with his most precious blood. 
that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us your peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. salvation. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Amen. pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his Son. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.
us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Grant Almighty God that the words that we have heard this day with our ears may be by your grace be grafted into our hearts that they may bring forth in us the fruit of a righteous life to the honor and praise of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.